DIY Auto School today and um, I actually have several videos on how to repair a bumper cover. But I really don't take you through the whole procedure from start to finish. So what we got is a late model Buick and you see that the gentleman that owns the car uh, ran into a uh, light pole over at the shopping center when he was trying to pull out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to fix this. Now, this is not just uh, scuffed up. This actually is dented. So I'm going to show you uh, how to do a quick fix on this because this guy's a senior citizen. He's living off Social Security. He doesn't have a lot of money. And my friend Pete's going to help him out, do a nice clean job, fix his car up. And we're going to go ahead and fix this with the bumper cover on the car. And I'm going to take you through the important steps of what to do and how to fix it the proper way. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. Before we even start on our dent, we want to go ahead and protect all of the areas that we are not going to touch. Now that includes our headlight here. Once we start on this, we don't want to mess our headlight up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some 2 inch tape and then I will tape around the edge of the headlight. So when I'm using my uh, air tools and sanders, this, that and the other, uh, we won't scuff that headlight up. Now that our headlights protected, the next thing we want to do, we want to clean this area up where we are going to go ahead and repair it. Um, there's one more thing that we're looking at and that's down here. Uh, since we're not going to be painting this area, and I'm going to show you that later, what we want to do is take some more yellow tape and we want to go around this edge here so our power tools do not uh, affect this area in any way. Now that our area is fully protected from any type of abuse from our, that's right, DA sander, we're going to go ahead and take a piece of 80 grit. Um, a lot of people out there might think that this is kind of extreme to do this, but uh, believe me, using 80 grit to repair this is going to really, really make the procedure go very, very smoothly and fast. So before we go any further, I want to go ahead and show you the damage that has been collected by him bumping into this. If you can look right here, you can see there's uh, cracks in the paint itself. This is not in the plastic. These are little cracks. These are hairline cracks that are in the paint. And also, I don't know if you can see it, but it is dented right here where he hit it, and it does feel a little bit of imperfection. So by using our 80 grit sand, our 80 grit DA paper, that's going to eliminate all this right here, remove it, and then it'll also use as a sander or what have you, a planer type tool to plane that down and flatten it out properly. Now if you don't have a DA sander and you can come up with an orbital electric sander, that'll work just as good, but you've got to have some type of tool that's going to go ahead and remove this and at the same time go ahead and finesse it back to the finish that we want. So we'll take our DA sander and we'll go ahead and proceed to remove all the paint in this area and also at the same time start flattening out uh, the high spots to the magnitude of not going all the way through the bumper. Here's a high spot here, there was another one here, and then there's also a dent right here. Fucking bitch. Motherfucker. Damn it. And uh, when it's cold outside, like it is right now, about 32 degrees, you're going to have a hell of a time trying to stick your paper onto your DA sander to make it fucking work. Now, before 
before I go any further in that, we can see where our low spots are by uh, locating the white paint. Everywhere that you see white paint is a low spot, and that was where the hardest impact of the pole, when he hit into it, it dented the bumper cover in. Just because this is plastic does not mean that it does not dent. So now that we have removed all of the cracks in it, we, now what we got to do is we got to concentrate on where all our low spots are and remove those so we can go ahead and apply our putty. Now that we have removed the paint from the low spots, it is now time to go ahead and apply our uh, polyester, what is that called? It's polyester filler putty. Let's go over there and I'm going to show you what it is. So the container that we're looking at, this is our polyester finishing putty. Now this is a very, very creamy, very, very um, uh, uh, usable situation. And this is usually what you would use on your bumper cover to fix the high and low spots. But I noticed on our bumper cover, it's got just a little bit more than normal average dance. So what we're going to do is take our polyester filler putty, and we're going to go ahead and take just some of our common use Bondo, all right, just like this. And one more thing, it's very cold outside today, so uh, bear with me. Um, I haven't had my heaters on uh, yet, all right. I wanted to get out here and make this video set for us so we can uh, figure out how all this is done. But um, you want to go ahead and take some Bondo, all right, lightweight Bondo. Uh, putty and then to make this work even better we're going to go ahead and take our polyester finishing putty get the lid off of that and then we're going to mix some of that with this and you can see how cold it is right now that should be running out of there like water but uh, once again it's uh, about 35 degrees out freezing ass cold very early in the morning so we're trying to do this to show you how it's done and uh, get her done so what we've done here, we have created a high-tech Bondo. Now, let me explain something before we go any further. I don't want to make this a six-hour video. Um, if you have to use Bondo, raw Bondo, on a bumper cover, uh, that's going to the extreme, and you really need to go ahead and replace the bumper cover if it's that bad. But if you get an imperfection like I'm showing you, where it's just a little bit imperfected, go ahead and mix up your Bondo with your finishing putty right here. Mix those two together. And then what that does, that creates a nice solid substance, yet it's a creamy substance that's going to fill in and it's going to sand very easily and quickly. And since it's cold out, we're going to add a little bit more hardener than it would usually take. Um, that's another thing when using Bondo, always add the hardener by the weather that it is. So if it's cold out, use more hardener. If it's real super hot out, use less hardener. And then we'll take this Bondo and uh, putty mix. And we'll go ahead and mix that up, making sure that all the streaks and all of the coloration is all the same and all the streaks are gone. And then we are now ready to apply our Bondo mixing putty onto the bumper cover. Alright, so what we're going to concentrate on, we're going to concentrate our, our low spots when we apply our Bondo, but we're also going to go ahead and concentrate on feathering it out. Um, if it's hot out, you want to go ahead and be pretty quick at this, but when it's cold out, you can actually take your time. So we're going to go ahead and fill this one in here. There was a low spot right there. And then right here, there was a few little low spots as well. And uh, when I apply my uh, filler onto a bumper cover, I put more than it usually takes. That way, um, I have to put less coats of it on, especially when it's cold out. Uh, you want to uh, apply a lot and then do, a, do more sanding than have to put several coats of it on. Okay, now that our filler is dry, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and get a fresh piece of 80 grit 
sandpaper. We're going to go ahead and apply that to our DA sander. And then what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and finesse that out and start feathering it out using our DA. Once we've feathered it out and we see that the dents are pretty much all the way gone but we got high spots and low spots, what we'll do is we'll start sanding it using a hand block with 80 grit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of 80 grit stick on file paper. I'm going to also use a flex block. This is a hand block. You can see that it's flexible and we'll go ahead and stick that on to our hand block and then we'll take our block and sand it to a finished product for primer. To check the dent properly, you want to take your hand using your full hand, not your fingers, and you want to rub your hand across the area that you are working on, making sure that all the high spots and low spots are gone. And it seems like it feels very good. You can see there was a dent right here in this area. There was also a crease right here. And then up here there was a small dent with our high spot. The reason we used our filler in this area is to compensate for our small high spot so everything will feather out nice and even. What we're going to do next, we're going to take a piece of 180 dry using our hand block once again. This is a stick-on style uh, uh, um, piece of paper we got right here. We're going to go ahead and take that and now we're going to go ahead and fine sand it using 180. And we're also going to override the area that we sanded with, one, with 80 grit. We're going to override it just a little bit so we have a place to tape it off to prime it. Using the 180 sandpaper is going to give us a nice smooth finish. It's going to get rid of those deep scratches that we used, that we uh, got from our 80 grit when we used our DA sander, and it's going to give us a nice surface for our primer to stick and fill in everything that we need to fill in before we go ahead and apply our paint. I'm also going to take a piece of small sandpaper and I'm going to clean this edge up right here that rolls under where the grill is. And what we'll do is we'll just clean that edge off. We don't want to sand inside there, we just want to get that Bondo off of there, that filler that was left behind when we applied it. And I'm using 180 to do this, not 80 grit. Now that we're finished repairing our damage on our bumper, you want to go ahead and take a blower and blow it off vigorously. After we've cleaned it off and blown it off and gotten it all prepped up and ready for uh, primer, we're going to go ahead and take our paper and we are going to go ahead and start taping off the area that needs to be primed. Alright, now what we're going to do on the sides of the bumper over here where we're going to be painting, we're going to go ahead and do a trick of the trade, it's called back taping. And what that consists of is we are going to actually face our paper toward the damaged area, put our tape down nice and tight, and then we'll roll it back. And what that'll do, that'll give a nice soft edge um, on the edges here so when we go to sand it, it'll be feathered out and it'll be a lot easier to sand than having a sharp line. So 
So the primer that I'm going to use, which I use on mostly everything that I do, is a 2K primer. It's an ultra high build primer. It's very thick, very consistent, and it builds up very quickly. We'll go ahead and apply two coats of that onto our bumper cover and be done with it and ready for paint. Now, if you're on a budget and you do not want to buy a gallon of primer to fix a bumper repair, here's an item that you can use right here. This is called a High Five. This is a high build, but I will tell you this. This is not a 2K primer. So if you use this primer, you're at your own risk that it might blister around all the edges of where you sprayed it. To get a consistent, professional job, you must use a 2K primer, which requires a hardener activator so the primer will not shrink, blister, or wrinkle when used upon. apply two to three full wet coats of primer until covered and then I will let it sit for approximately three hours to possibly overnight depending on the weather once again and then we will be back to go ahead and sand it down for paint. I would like to throw in that the first coat of primer that you apply to your bumper cover is going to look very, very um, inconsistent and it's also going to look like it's not doing anything. That's just because you used your DA sander and you went down to the plastic. Do not be alarmed by that. Once that first coat final dries to attack, we're going to go ahead and apply our other coats and that will fill all that in and it will look really, really nice. sit and dry for approximately two and a half three hours and then what I did I went ahead and took some black very fast drying flat spray paint and I put a guide coat on it. Now guide coat's very important because when you start sanding that you're going to see all the imperfections and what the guide coat's going to do it's going to tell you when you're done sanding. So if you got any little pinholes in it or you missed some spots this that and the other or possibly there were runs in it like we got right here um, it's going to show you all that. So to start out my sanding procedure, what I'm going to do is I'm taking a piece of 80 grit. Now, that might sound kind of crazy and kind of absurd, but we're not going to sand it with 80 grit. All we're going to do is just bust the top layer of the primer off. That's all. And you can see that I'm doing this with my hand, and I'm very, very easily sanding that as I break it loose. Um, when primer dries, it actually has a top coat on it and it's usually gummy and uh, sticky. So what I'm doing here, I'm just breaking that off to get down to the real sanding area that we need to be. Another thing I'm doing is I'm keeping my sanding contained. I don't want to go any farther this way and I don't want to go any farther that way. So the least that we keep our contained area, the better it's going to be for us. And remember that soft edge I put on here when I back taped it? That left a nice soft edge and we won't be able to see where we taped it off. And it'll also give us a situation that says we'll be able to um, sand it a lot quicker. So I had some runs in this because it was 30 degrees this morning. And all I'm doing with my 80 grit, once again, I'm just removing the uh, top coat of the primer. And also, if there's any runs in it, I'm removing those. The 
This is actually a very important step right here. I'm not using a lot of force. I'm doing it very easily and very, very softly. And all I'm doing is removing the imperfections of the runs and anything else I see that might need to be in the way of what might not work out properly, if that makes any sense. Okay, now that I've busted off the top coat of the primer, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to take our soft block one more time, it's a flex block, and we're going to sand that using 180 dry. We're going to use the same type file paper that we used before, I'm going to wrap it around just like that, and now we're really going to start block sanding it to feather out the edges and get all the imperfections off. our 180 grit, what we're going to do next is we're going to look for our imperfections because we've already removed all of our guide coat. And if I look right here, I can see that there's a small imperfection. So before I add any filler to that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my 180 and I'm going to keep sanding that until the black spot goes away. And now, we have removed our low spot because actually the bondo that we applied to it, the filler, uh, was actually high. And that's what's good about using a guide coat to show you what's going on. All right, now that we've dried sanded it down to 180 grit, the next thing we're going to do is we are going to wet sand it with 400. Now on this particular sand job that we're going to do this time, uh, this step you might say, we're actually going to sand it all the way over to here. We're not going to, we're going to try to keep everything contained, but every time that we sand, we got to go a little bit farther out. So we're going to keep it contained from about right here all the way over to about right here. What I have is a bucket of water. I got a sponge in that water. I also got a flex block and a piece of 400 wet. So we're going to take our sponge and we'll saturate it with water, make sure that it's full. We'll set that up there. And then I'm going to take my flex block. I'm going to go ahead and wrap my paper around the block. And now, once we wet sand this, it'll be a nice glass finish and ready for epoxy primer and paint. steps done the next thing we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and continue to wet sand but we are going to go ahead and transfer over to 1500 now the reason we're going to sand with 1500 is because this is going to be where we blend our paint in and our clear coat so the paint and clear coat will stick wherever we stop so we will blend I'm going to go ahead and remove this tape right here now and then what we're going to do is we'll sand all the way up to here, we'll come around here, we'll sand all this area on the side of the bumper right here, um, all the way down here, and then I see there's a body line right here, so we'll come down here, and then we're going to come around just like this, and then we'll stop in this area right here. So we're basically going to paint just this area here without disturbing the bottom. And when you do this, you want to start out with a block. You want to start sanding your 1500 with a block, but when we get done, we're going to end up finishing it out by hand. To finish our sanding out, I'm going to take my 1500 and I'm going to go ahead and fold it without the block. 
Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and get around this headlight. I'm going to get this edge right here and then I'll finish this edge right here and make sure that everything is properly sanded on the edges so the paint won't peel off. One more thing I'd like to um, throw your way is when you are sanding with your 1500 by hand or even with the block you want to be very careful uh, when you start going out farther not to burn the edges of paint because if you burn the edges then you'll have to bring it out even farther to paint that so be careful when you're sanding sharp edges with your 1500. I want to make sure that I get all my edges really good and I'm concentrating on using my thumb as a guide so I don't sand the fender while I'm sanding the bumper cover. And remember, we're only going down to right here. So we want to make sure that we get the edge really good. And then get all the edges. We'll go ahead and remove our tape now. And uh, get it ready to tape off for paint. And I believe we're done. Now, while I have my water here, um, we're going to have to tape this area off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my sponge, I'm going to reach inside here, and I'm going to try to clean that fender well out a little bit to get some of the dirt off. And you don't want to do this till last because what you'll do is you'll get your water dirty, so be careful. And then we'll go ahead and just wash that off. Making sure everything's clean. And now, we're ready to go ahead, tape it off, and get it painted. school. Classes don't stop till you know everything.